Welcome, I'm Kimberly Harding, and I'm a, one of the artists working with Lori Bogdan on Confluence. So uh, back in the spring of 2020, um, Lori contacted me about wanting to collaborate on a proposal for the 2020 Art Ramble. Um, which is something I had never done any work for, and neither had she, but she um, was excited by the idea of, of working together. And uh, so I said yes, and we uh, then started working together, researching the theme, which is water, uh, to come up with an idea um, to, uh, for a piece of work. And uh, we eventually settled on the uh, Sudbury, Assabet, and Concord River system, which comes together in Concord, where Art Ramble uh, is shown. Um, and it comes together at a place called Egg Rock. So that's how we decided to um, choose those rivers. And we did a lot of research on their history and what's good about them and what's bad about them. And uh, then we moved on to the next phase of this. Writing, proposal. writing a proposal. And there's several components that they asked us to include in our proposal. One was a description of our project, which Kimberly just explained to you. And by the way, I'm Laurie Bogdan, the other half of this piece. And um, so we split up the tasks on our proposal writing. Uh, Kimberly took on um, putting together all of her research and talking about what we wanted to portray to the people that would be seeing this piece. We also had to include photographs of our past work. Both of us have done a little bit of public art. Um, we thought that was important to include because this is a public art piece. Um, we each had to tweak our resumes, um, which we included in this proposal too. Uh, and the last thing they asked us for was a sketch or a model. And if you look to the right of this slide, you'll see um, a small model, a small scale model that um, I created, which combined the two elements of both of our art. Um, it's there in a little grove of lilacs showing our piece in small form. So um, one of the first things we needed to do, because this was going to be a site specific uh, installation, was to choose a site. And Lori and I walked around um, the Hapgood Wright Forest um, and, and picked several possible sites, um, which we then uh, shared with Susan Israel, the curator of the show. Um, and then we met with her to uh, figure out uh, which was the best location. And so we set it on this one that you see here in the picture. Um, and Susan had a good idea. We had originally planned to go um, from the tree that's on the far right to the tree that's on the far left. Um, but she suggested going through the trees. So um, that would give it a different view. Um, so people would get a view coming both different ways on the path. Um, which we liked. So we, we did that. We adjusted our, our layout. It ended up being a little bit longer than we had originally foreseen. And we took um, extensive measurements to make sure that we were going to be accurate in uh, our installation. And now it is time to make a model and figure out how we're going to, uh, to do this piece together. Um, and on the left, you'll see uh, a midi spring model that um, was created by Kimberly. Uh, in the center, we came up with the idea to weave in fused plastic that was done in a feather formation. So when the breeze hit the piece, it would have some movement. And we got together in Kimberly's yard to put it all together in the model, tweak our ideas, 
see if we were happy with it, which we were, changed a few things, but this is what we came up with. And going forward, we'll talk to you about what is sprang, which is the base part of this piece, and what is fused plastic. So going forward here, I am in my kitchen sorting and prepping the about 450 plastic bags that were collected from the community. And I, they had to be flattened, sorted, and stacked. And then I moved on into my garage and created an iron working station. And in order to fuse plastic, you place the plastic in between two pieces of parchment paper on a suitable ironing surface, which you see here. And you play around and figure out how hot your iron should be and you iron the plastic until it is completely stuck together with no bubbles. And the layers create a thicker, stiffer form of plastic, which we felt were good for weaving. And while Lori was fusing plastic, I was um, getting ready to make the spraying base. Um, on the bottom left, you can see my three spools of 100,000, well, I mean, excuse me, 1,000 feet each of nylon rope. And you can see my model above that um, to figure out where the river was going to go and where I was going to create the bubbles which you yeah, have to do as I'm weaving. Um, and then I had to measure it out. So each, this, each length of rope, uh, each weaver was uh, 59 feet long. So I measured that out in my yard and, and connected it all up so it wouldn't tangle. And then I set up a loom um, and started weaving. And here you can see that I first started out in my yard weaving and then I end up moving indoors. Uh, spraying, uh, I was doing free end spraying because of the type of uh, design that I needed, which was irregular. Um, and so periodically I had to um, untangle all the spraying because when you weave at the top, it weaves the same thing at the bottom and then you have to pull it out and, and detangle it. So. That was a frequent part of the weaving. And there I am inside weaving. You see when, it, when you weave it, it's very, very compact. And uh, later you'll see how it spreads out. And here are the components of plastic that I fuse together. In the center, you can see a completed piece and we love the way it had that sort of bubbly, watery effect. Um, and on all four sides around here are the different components that we put together that we would be weaving into the base. And here you can see the completed sprang weaving. I stretched it out on my lawn so I could measure it and make sure, make it be the right dimensions, which is 18 feet long and four and a half feet wide. And, um, and then fortunately there were two trees in my yard. We could um, hang it up so that we could then weave the components that Lori had made. And there we are in the yard <laughs> weaving and, uh, we had fun socially distancing while leaving <laughs> in the yard. And once our first row was done, uh, we decided it was time to share it with the world. So both of us on our various Instagram accounts and Facebook pages began the important part of, of uh, telling other people about this. Um, we, in several of our postings, we tagged each other so her followers could follow and my followers could follow. And we also started tagging in our posts the various organizations that sponsored this event, which by the way, are the Umbrella Arts in Concord. 
Then we began to complete our weaving process. You can see on the left where it says textile, there are various colors that are at the end of our piece. And this represents the Lowell Mills textile industry dumping their dyes into the river system up there uh, in the late 1800s. You could tell what color they were dyeing that day because the colors would flow down the river. In the, and that's on the Concord River. In the center section where it comes down, that's a representation of the Sudbury River. And you could see some silver pieces woven in and coming down. And there was a company that dumped mercury into the water system. It's still there now. You can't eat the fish that are in the Sudbury River because of that. Um, and on the right, there is a representation of algae bloom and silt. This comes along from the climate change and other environmental impacts on the river. And here is the uh, completed weaving uh, in my yard. And uh, in the meat, uh, Lori also made some other components which we'll talk about in a moment, um, which we attached on site, but this is, this is the finished piece. And the center section of this piece, you'll see it's all blue because this represents the healthy revitalized section of where the three rivers come together as a confluence. Here we are, happy to be done. And then it came time to make the various wildlife that we decided would be very playful and fun to have in our piece. Creates a different element of interest. We thought the kids would enjoy it. Plus we wanted to represent uh, that uh, wildlife can live in the healthy part of the river. So we chose a variety of uh, fish that would be commonly found in the Concord River. Uh, here you'll see a brook trout um, and a cut a pattern, made a bigger cut a pattern, used Tyvek because this was going to be outside for two and a half months. So it had to be waterproof. So I primed it with, a, with an outdoor type of primer, sewed the components together, and then painted them. So we have a turtle and some fish, and a great blue heron. And here you see the great blue heron in its nest, which I created out of the roof of an old bird feeder that I had made that had, had outlived its, its life as a bird feeder and was a great base to make a bird nest. Then it came time to install our piece. And lucky for us, Kimberly's husband, Josh, came along and held our ladders and kept us safe and took some photographs as we reached tall up into the trees to hang our piece. You can and yep, more pictures of us hanging. <laughs> Now it was time to attach the wildlife. We didn't do that beforehand because we rolled it up in order to carry it and we didn't want to hurt any of that part. And, and on the right, you can see how when the sunshine comes through the piece, uh, it plays with the light. And in the background, Kimberly spoke earlier about um, the base and her weaving. This is a good representation of how the spring looks like water flow and has bubbles in it. And uh, over here, we hidden along the side is the great blue heron. And if you look carefully and behind, if you come to visit in person, sometimes you'll see a live great blue heron flying by or sitting in the water. Here's the east view. So when you're walking from the east towards towards the piece, you can see this side. You can see the the fish in the middle, uh, and 
the, the textile dyes. And here is the full view. Uh, as you can see, it comes down to this tree, passes through over here and attaches over here. And over here is our great blue heron. Um, we love the way it blends with the background behind it um, of the pond. And yet at the same time, it's a big color pop in the woods, which makes it more fun and playful. And here we decided to bring a group of our ArtLinks artist friends and networking group in Arlington. We went for an art walk through the entire ramble and ended up at our piece and gave a short art talk for our group. And here we are. We hope you will get a chance to see it in person if, or uh, on the video. And learn about, um, about our message. So we are hoping that when you look at this piece, inspires you to work together within your community, with your friends, with your family, to keep all of our waterways clean and healthy. So thank you. Thank you for listening and watching. Yes, till next time. Come back next year, the theme is air at Art Ramble. We hope to be there then.